Hey, what's up guys? It's Inscore Sports coming back with another video. It's been a while, I know. It's been a, uh, it was a long semester. A lot of things happened, some good, some bad. Um, so that's why I've been really inactive, me and Nick both. But we're back today. I'm uh, doing uh, Nick's picks. This is before week 17. The last one I did was before week 10. So it's been quite a long time since I've done one of these. But I figured since today is Friday, there are no games until Sunday, I believe. I don't think there are any tomorrow. Could be wrong on that. But there's not been any for week 17 yet. So I wanted to go ahead and do these picks before, uh, before week 17 starts. So I'm going to start off with number 10. I'm going to go 10 through 1. So basically these are the playoffs teams minus two of the teams because there's basically about 13 or so teams that have a chance at playoff uh making the playoffs so i'm just going to go 10 through 1 so number 10 i have the philadelphia eagles they're 8 and 7 they have a chance to clinch the division with a win over the giants this week so i think they will get into the playoffs they will get a uh first round uh home playoff game um they are the fourth seed right now um i just think that carson wentz has done so much with so little i mean you've had Zach Ertz just got hurt. He won't play this week. He's uh, His receivers are all banged up. Nelson Aguilar has been out. Uh, Alshon Jeffries out for the season. They've been relying on Greg Ward Jr., a quarterback, playing wide receiver in the NFL. Um, and then J.J. Arcega-Whiteside has been uh, not that good, and he's like their second option. They've had to go to the practice squad for receivers. They're playing two or three tight end sets. So Carson Wentz is, uh, does not have a lot to work with, and he's still doing a pretty good job of uh, keeping them in game. So I have them in the I have them in the top ten. I just don't think because I don't think they're going to get really healthy by the time the playoffs start. If if we knew that the uh, the receivers were coming back for the playoffs, it might be a different story. I might have them higher, but since I don't think they'll have key players back for the playoffs, I have to put the Eagles at ten. At number nine, I have the Houston Texans. Now, for a lot of people, you would look at the Texans saying, wow, they could end up with the two or three seed in the AFC. Why are they so low? Uh, they're 10 and five. Right now, they're the four seed in the AFC, but they could get up to three, possibly even two, depending on how things go. I believe, personally, that the Texans are so inconsistent. It's actually ridiculous how inconsistent they are. They have beaten teams like the Chiefs and the Patriots, but they've also lost to the Ravens, and they've lost to teams like the Broncos. So, And they got obliterated by the Broncos. So it's it's crazy how inconsistent they are, and inconsistency does not really work in the playoffs because, yeah, you could have a good game, but you have to have a good game in the playoffs. You can't, be, you can't just have a bad game and expect to be uh, winners in the playoffs like you can't do that so because they're so inconsistent I have to put them at nine because I don't think they will go anywhere in the playoffs at number eight I have the Buffalo Bills they are right now the five seed in the AFC so they would have a uh, road playoff game for their first game they'd be in a wild card round for them I think their defense is what is keeping them alive Guys like Tredavious White and Ed Oliver and Jerry Hughes and some of those guys on the on the defense are they have played great and I think they have kept them really alive because Josh Allen, their quarterback, is not particularly good. He he's a good athlete, but he's not a great throw the thrower of the football just yet. I think he will get to that point eventually. He has a strong arm, but right now he's just not there, um, and I think he's too inconsistent to uh, win a playoff game at this point. So I have them at eight. Um, at seven, I have the New England Patriots. Now this is another probably shocker for a lot of people because right now they are the two seed in the AFC. They're 12 and three. I'm doing this a lot more because of how I think they'll do in the playoffs, not totally just on how their record right now, but I think looking forward, they don't have a deep threat receiver. They're relying on Julian Edelman, and he is kind of not playing very well right now. Um, and they don't have a real tight end that's very good. Uh, and their receivers are very inconsistent. So that's why I think Tom Brady, is, with his age, 
I just don't think he has the weapons necessary to really go anywhere um, in the playoffs. Their defense is great, but that's about it. Um, I mean, this receiving core on the Patriots, probably bottom three in the league. I mean, it's just, it's crazy what Tom Brady has to work with. It's not very much. So I have them at seven. Number six, I have the Green Bay Packers. They're 12 and three. They are the number two seed in the uh, NFC right now. Um, I have them pretty low compared to what their record shows, but I think just with Aaron Rodgers, he's great and all, but he is getting a little older and he's relying on Devonta Adams way too much, I feel like. Aaron Jones, their running back, is very good, but I think when you just have a running back and one receiver you rely on too much, that probably won't get it done in the playoffs, and I think... When you have other teams in the NFC like the Seahawks and 49ers with great defenses, relying on one guy isn't going to work because they'll just take that one guy away and make you throw to other people. And just also to let everybody know their defense has struggled a bit. They're not quite as good as they used to be at the beginning of the season. Still good, but not one of the top defenses anymore. So I have them at six for that so Coming in at number five, I have the San Francisco 49ers. This team was the top of the NFL for about six or seven weeks. They had a really strong beginning to the season. They've still been good, but they have shown some vulnerability. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is uh, not quite at that elite, elite level yet where you can trust him in huge spots. He's played pretty good in big spots, but I just think when the playoffs come around, that's different than a regular season game, especially when everybody has their eye on you. Um, they're 12 and 3 right now. They're the number one seed in the uh, NFC, but that easily could be flipped around to the number five seed because the Seahawks, their other their uh, other opponent, um, they play each other week 17. And if the Seahawks win that game, they'll have the same record, and the Seahawks would have the tiebreaker. With Jimmy Garoppolo, I just I trust Russell Wilson more, and I think that's more why I have the 49ers down further is basically because of Jimmy Garoppolo, because the rest of their team is great. Their receivers are good. They have probably the best running back group in the league. They uh, Their defense is outstanding, but it's just Jimmy Garoppolo, and that um, inexperience, I would, I would say, is a good word. Um, I think that's why they're number five on my list. At number four, I have the Kansas City Chiefs. They are 11-4. and four. Uh, They're the three seed right now in the AFC. They're pretty high on my list compared to what most people would have. But I think with Patrick Mahomes, the, uh, their team's very good because their defense is coming into form finally at the end of the season. They're getting healthy. And this team, really, all they're missing, all they've been missing is the defense because, you know, their offense uh, with, with the running back group is not the best. But with Patrick Mahomes, you have Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey uh, and Sammy Watkins, so that's one of the best receiving cores in the in the league. With Patrick Mahomes, one of the best quarterbacks in the league. It's a crazy group, and if you don't have a team that can, you know, shoot have a shootout with you, the Chiefs are going to blow you out. Like if, for instance, if they play the Patriots, Patriots cannot play in a game where you have to have a shootout. You have to score 35 points, so the Chiefs will blow them out. That's just how it works, and especially when you have a good defense that doesn't allow you to score as much, the Chiefs are going to be a scary team. So I believe they could win a couple of playoff games. I think this team could go to the Super Bowl potentially also. Number three, I have the Seattle Seahawks. They are right now in the five seed. But like I said earlier, they uh, they play the 49ers in Week 17 this week. Uh, so that's the biggest game of the year for both of those teams. I know for sure they could get the number one seed. And that's huge because if they get the number one seed with Russell Wilson, they're going to be a hard team to beat because Russell Wilson, definitely a top three quarterback in the league. He's had a very good year this year. Their defense is better than it has been in recent years. Um, and their offensive line is better. I just think this team is a complete team. Now, the running backs, uh, Chris Carson and Rashad Penny, both got injured and are out for the year, which is huge for them. It's a huge loss. They are bringing Marshawn Lynch into play. I might make another short video about Marshawn Lynch in a little bit. But really quickly, I'll just say Marshawn Lynch, to me, will not make a huge impact. But I think 
it's possible for him to have a couple of good games and possibly could boost them over the hump. I don't believe he will, but it is possible to me that he could help their team, at least for a game or two. Uh, number two and number one, uh, most people are going to disagree with my number two team and my number one team. Number two, I have the Baltimore Ravens. Most people, everybody thinks they're the best team in the NFL. Everybody thinks Lamar Jackson is the best quarterback in the NFL and is going to win the MVP, and he's just amazing. Uh, the Ravens are 13-2, best record in the NFL. They're the number one seed in the AFC. I don't see that changing. But what I really want to get across, and I haven't had time to make videos in the past couple of weeks, really the past couple of months, but I've really wanted to make a video about Lamar Jackson just to tell you what I think about him. So I think he is the one of the most electric NFL players that we have ever seen. I really do. And that's pretty high praise. Um, he's more of a runner than a thrower, obviously. Um, he can take over games with his legs. But I really think he is overrated in the passing game. People are saying he's getting better at his throwing stats. Um, and his throwing in general, to me, I just don't think he can throw the ball down the field very well. I think he's very inaccurate. He relies on Mark Andrews, their tight end. If you watch, Mark Andrews is his target every single play. If it's not him, it's one of the running backs or a different tight end. He cannot throw to his wide receivers more than 20 yards down the field. And really, no more than 15 yards down the field. Um, and if he throws the ball further than that, the receivers are wide open. That's the only way they're going to catch the ball. If he cannot throw a contested ball and have it be ca caught, he's just not accurate enough. That is my one knock on him. People are saying he's really good. But if a team can keep him contained in the pocket and make him throw, he will not win a football game. He just won't. And a team hasn't been able to do that yet. The Buffalo Bills did a great job of it, but they didn't do quite a good enough job of it. But I think one of these playoff teams will figure it out and keep him in the pocket and make him throw the ball deep, and it won't work. And people will finally see that Lamar Jackson is not as accurate as they think he is. Now, some people are going to say that I'm a Lamar Jackson hater. I am not a hater. He is not my favorite player in the, in the world. Uh, that comes mostly because I didn't like him at Louisville very much. I'm a Houston native, so I like the Cougars. And, you know, they had their, their game against Louisville where Houston shut them down. Anyway, long story short, I just think Lamar is a little overrated. And he uh, he's just too much of a runner for me. I don't think running the ball like he is will last very long. And that is why I have the Ravens at two and not one, because I think he will be limited and tested in the playoffs throwing the ball. Now at number one, I have the Saints. They're 12 and three, their third seed in the NFC. To me, I think they have the full package. They have a great running back. Drew Brees is still great. He's probably only has a couple of years left, but I think uh, he's still great. The receivers are good they're not great Michael Thomas is definitely the best receiver in the NFL at this point um, and their other receivers are decent not great but their defense is very good and I think just with Drew Brees uh, throwing the ball and they're gonna have a lot of home playoff games and also they're pretty good on the road I think they're the best overall team in the NFL and I just think Drew Brees is more accurate and more consistent than almost any quarterback is and that's why I have them at one I see a Super Bowl with the Saints and Ravens, and I think possibly the Chiefs could beat the Ravens. So right now, I would have the Saints and Chiefs in the Super Bowl, and I think that would be a fun Super Bowl. So this is probably going to be a little bit longer because I ranted about a couple of different players. But that is my picks for Week 17 uh, before it happens. I'll get this out before the games happen. But yeah, so that is my picks. Um, like and subscribe. Hopefully I'll be back a little more consistently now. I have some new cameras and uh, lighting, so I hope that is better. And uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.